What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Unstable. Oh, yeah, guys. So I kind of rearranged our solar panels. <laughs> this is what the, what am I looking at? Tooltip says our water mills. I rearranged these. Yeah, so we can put a lot of them here in kind of a smaller area, you know, all having the maximum 16 GP per unit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I was kind of seeing like, what's the maximum we could get off of this one source block of water in the center? And then yeah, I had to play the place the source blocks of water around the outside just like so i don't know if that is the best way but anyway that's the way that i got this done so we are producing a decent amount of this grid power now 168 it looks like so yeah we shouldn't worry about having to fly and then we shouldn't have to worry about running our extra utilities machines over here with the speed upgrades or upgrade speeds yeah so anyway that is pretty cool so today i wanted to well, I was going to try and do a couple different things. I was thinking it might be kind of cool to go to the end and kill the end dragon. But honestly, I'm not really feeling it right now. So let's do something else. Uh, let's check out a brand new mod that's in, I think it was in 1.8. But anyway, it's brand new. I've never used it before. It's called Psy. So the first thing you need to do to start this mod, you have to press the letter C on your keyboard. And it brings up this information here. So this says, welcome to Psy, the best spell programming Magic Tech mod this side of the universe. Please keep in mind that having just enough items, JEI, or some other method of looking at recipes is essential for playing with Psy, as recipes are not included in this guide. Okay, we have all that covered. That's not a big deal. Uh, in order to get started spell slinging, you'll need some Psy dust. To get Psy dust, you'll need to start by crafting a cat assembler and an iron cat assembly. Place down the cat assembler and put the iron cat assembly in it to construct a very bare bones casting assistance device, CAD. From there, drop some redstone dust in the world, equip your cat, point at the dropped items, and right click to make your side dust. Okay, so that sounds pretty easy. So we need to go and craft ourselves a cat assembler and an iron cat assembly. Okay, so cat assembler. So a cat assembler, this is that. So it's a piston, five iron. That's not so bad. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves a piston. A zombie is going to get wrecked here in a second if he doesn't stop groaning out there. All right, you know what? Actually, what we're going to do, let's do this. <laughs> we'll just pretend the mobs don't exist. How does that sound? All right, so there is a piston, and then we needed some iron to go with that. There we go. There is the cat assembler. Cool. So we also need to make the iron cat assembly. So that is just four iron. That's not so bad. All right, so we got one of those. So it also said we needed some redstone dropped on the ground. I actually don't know how much. Let's do a full stack because we got a little bit of redstone. I've been farming this stuff to get the uh, the resonating crystal things or whatever for the water mill. So yeah, we got plenty of redstone. Uh, so we're supposed to drop this on the ground like so, and then we're supposed to right click it with this. Left click it. Shift right click, shift left click. Uh, Oh, wait, no, no, no. I missed a step. I missed a step. So I'm supposed to place the cat assembler, insert the cat assembly in it, and create the casting device. I wrote down notes, and I wasn't even looking at them. All right, so I'll place this down. Where does this go? Right there. Casting. Oh, that's the ca Okay, okay. So we got to do this. That sound, though. All right, so now we drop the redstone. Then we right-click it. Level up! I'm level one. You got one level point. Unequip your cat and press C to use it. Okay, now we got a bar on the side over there. That's filling all the way up. We got 200, whatever that is. <laughs> all right. Uh, press, unequip your cat and press C to use it. Okay. So we got tutorials. Lots of different stuff. Wow, that's a lot of tutorial action here, isn't that, guys? All right, so let's go tutorial. I think we have to do these in order, right? What is this? Trick debug. Hold shift for more info. For testing, print out the target. None target any number. Okay. And then selector caster selects the person casting the spell entity player living. Hmm. Learn. Okay. So tutorial one, welcome to the leveling menu. It looks like you've gotten acquainted with your brand new cat. This menu serves as your school for the mod. And this is your first tutorial. Don't worry, this is the longest one as it has to teach you the basics. All right, that's fine, that's fine. 
To get started programming spells, you'll need a spell programmer. To run your spells, you'll also need a better CAD than the one that you have right now. One with all the components. Look at the various CAD components, assembly, core, socket, battery, and optionally colorizer and create one. You don't have to make another assembly. You can put your current CAD that is effectively just an assembly in your crafting grid to revert it to an assembly. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, lastly, spells also need to be put in this, into the spell bullets. Oh, okay, so make yourself all of that stuff and let's get rolling. After you set, all right, yeah, after you're set with all you need, open up your spell programmer by right clicking it. You'll see a large grid. This is where the magic happens. The programming system is less of a traditionally complex programming system and more of a simple sequence of actions. This is already starting to sound complicated. Uh, to add pieces to the grid, or to add a piece to the grid, right click any part of it and select the pieces that come up. Uh, as you can see from the bottom, okay, so I guess the stuff that I'm reading right now is things that we should be looking at <laughs> while we're doing it. So let me go ahead and make the little pieces that it wanted me to do. Um, I'm going to revert to this thing back to, yeah, the Iron Cat assembly. Yeah, let me go ahead and just go over this real quick. I'll get the little pieces crafted up that we need. We'll be right back to check this thing out properly. All right, guys. Well, I went through the tutorial a little bit. And I was kind of reading all the different things that we needed. So I ended up making the spell programmer. This seems like how we're going to actually write spells to put onto our casting assistance device. So it also turns out that the one that we have, this Iron Cat Assembly, yeah, we need all these different upgrades for it. There's also a colorizer, I think. Yeah, we can change it so the gun is a different color, but let's not worry about that. That's not really necessary. So anyway, this is our Iron Cat Assembly plus a basic CAD socket. This allows us to put some of these spell bullets into the gun. Yeah, we need these to actually make the spells, right? Uh, we have a basic CAD core, and then we have the basic CAD battery. Okay, so all these things together, let's go ahead and make this casting device. That sounds pretty awesome. All right, so now we have our upgraded CAD. So over on the spell programmer, if we right click on here, yeah, we can see our CAD here. Pretty cool. So this is like a big grid where we can lay out all the different spells. So what you do is you just left click somewhere and you can place the green selection. That's where you're gonna place your spell or you place whatever component you're doing. So if we right click on that, we can see all the different things that we have available. Yes, yeah, so we have trick, debug, and selector, caster. So if we uh, hold shift on these, we can see that this is gonna output an entity, player or living, and then we can hold shift on the trick, debug, and we see it outputs nothing, it inputs target any, and then in brackets it says number. The brackets means uh, that is like an optional item, you don't have to do that, so we have to provide it with the target, we do not have to provide it with the number, but we can. Okay, so this one, let's just do caster selector. We'll click this. That's whoever's casting the spell, which in our case is going to be us. We'll select this one. We'll right click. We'll do trick debug. Yep. And then we can see over here that this has different configs. So as we saw when we hold shift over here, we need to input a target and we have, we optionally can input a number. So this thing is outputting the target, which is us, right? So we have to say, from here, we go to the left and we can get the caster selector, right? Or the selector caster, whatever. So all we gotta do is just click this little button that links these two together and knows where the target is. Yeah, and I think that's all we gotta do. Do we click on one of these? Mm, we can rename this thing. Caster selector debug, not enough text, not enough room for me to type in the whole debug thing, but yeah. That's where we're at with that. So I think we escape off the table. Oh, look at this. It also shows right here. So we can see caster selector debug <laughs> and the two things that we did. So I think what we have to do is take our one of these spell bullets and then we right click. Sounds right. So if we come over here to the CAD assembler, we can put our new CAD here that has the upgrades. Yeah, the basic slots or whatever this thing is, basic CAD socket. Gives us four spots to add in bullets, so we can put this bullet right here. All right, and then I think we just pull this out, like so. Um, it says casting assistance device, caster selector debug is what that says. Okay, so if I right click on this, 
Oh, there he did. Okay, so you can see in the chat box down there, it says Entity Player MP Hypnotized, which is me. And it gives some information about my location. All right, that's pretty cool. It leveled us up, so I guess that's all we had to do. Oh, if I press C now, we go into this. If I get off of this and I press C, then it goes back to the tutorial. Okay, so all four of those different spots that we can put these spells in, we can select through this little radial menu. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, that one's selected. I can unselect anything so nothing happens where I click this or I can go back here, select that, and then right click. Yeah, and then that's just showing some debug information about me saying we're on the unstable 1.10. I think that's a world name is what I chose is why it says that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I like it. So let's go to tutorial number two. I didn't actually read all of tutorial one, and it doesn't look like it gives me an option to go back to level one, does it? I don't think it does. Okay, well, anyway, uh, tutorial number two. Let's talk about the number perimeter that we saw last time. You'll notice that the perimeter has an extra option in the center. That means the... Uh, that means it's optional by selecting the center. You can disable it. Okay. That's cool I think that was selected by default since we didn't choose one of the directions, right? In our case the number is Simply a label of sorts. It can be useful If we have a more complex spell where we have multiple things being sent out to chat it requires a number So let's give it one. We now have access to the constant number piece uh, Is that what this is constant number? select and type to set a value. Okay, so that'll output a number. Cool, and then we have a connector, connect stuff and things. So that outputs any and inputs any. Inputs any target, I guess. Cool, all right. So let's give it one. Uh, we now have access to the constant number piece. Add the number to your debug piece and add a constant number piece to your grid to connect it to the debug piece. You can then Set the number by clicking on the piece and typing the number with your keyboard. Okay, so that sounds easy enough. Let's come over here. So we wanted, this is the one that, that has a number. So we'll come down here, we'll select number. Constant number, we'll type in, I don't know, the number four, right? And then here we'll select and we'll do a connector. Oh, I don't think that's the way that works. Uh, shift, okay, shift right click, gets rid of that. So maybe we'll do, how do you set the connector to be like one full line? Cause that seemed like, hmm, maybe I was doing that wrong. So if we connect that to there, can I select multiple? I'm not sure how that works really. Is that all we need to do? Okay, so I think I figured that out. Uh, what I had to do was come over to the trick debug, say that the input is coming from the bottom. So we set this to the red thing, like so. Yeah, and when you set that, that changes this connector. So then it goes to the entire thing, which I didn't realize that was what was happening. I was expecting to have to draw this manually or whatever. But yeah, this connects to whatever it's supposed to connect to. So this number four automatically has this thing because it's touching a connector. Yeah, and this one is inputting the connector from the bottom. So I think that's all we had to do for the spell. So I think if we take this and we right click, shift right click, I think that updates our bullet that's on here to the newer version. So if I right click this, there we go. Level up three. You got one level point. Cool. I like it. So yeah, we can see there in the chat that says four next to where it says entity player. And I believe that is that number that we just typed in here. So if I type in here three, well, I guess 43, <laughs> type in here three, escape, do that. Right click, now it says three there in the chat. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I'm not sure how useful that is. Maybe it'll be useful later on, but this is just a tutorial, so it's kind of teaching us how to do things. So if we come back in here, level three, this is gonna give us trick add motion. So it's going to output none, but it's gonna input a target, a direction, and a speed. And then also we have the operator entity look, which is gonna output a vector and it's gonna input a target. So this is getting a little bit more complex, all right? Uh, let's go ahead, well, I'll tell you what, instead of me reading the entire thing to you, I will read it myself, I'll try and figure this out, and then I'll explain it the best that I can. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, so basically for this tutorial, what we needed to do is add this trick add motion. I think it wants us just to use this the one time to move on. So you can see here that this requires three different things, 
we need a target, a direction, and a speed. So the way this is going to work is the add motion is going to be looking over to the left for the selector caster. That's me who's initiating the spell. Okay, and then we're also going to have an entity look. This is going to be the direction that I'm looking in. This thing needs a target, so it needs to know who's looking which direction. So the target is me again, so the selector who's initiating the spell. Uh, so the entity look is me, and then that's wrapping over here to the bottom side of this trick add motion. So the direction is coming from the entity look, which is me, and the target for trick add motion is me, right? Okay, so that's what this is. So the final thing that we needed is speed, and we're just putting in a constant number three. I don't know if this is too large or too small. I know the larger the number, the more the more the cost of the spell is going to be. And since we don't have a lot of size, spell, magic, points, whatever they're called, I honestly don't know. I'm just starting with like a relatively small number, number three. So I haven't tried this yet. I assume it's all going to work. I'm not seeing any like errors. It's got the check mark. So let's do shift right click on this. Okay, that's called add motion minus. The minus key, by the way, is a key that I use uh, to start recording. <laughs> so that's why there's sometimes a minus key on the screen. So if I right click on this. Okay, so level up four, you got one level point. I guess I did everything correctly. So it looks like they used all of my points or they all went away because I leveled up. I'm not sure. So let's try that again because I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to work. So we have 800. And if I point this way, like up, yeah, it makes me jump a little bit. Oh, and that does use like all of my points. Now we got to wait for that all to charge back up. That's interesting. Okay, so I guess three is probably a little too expensive. Let's try changing that to like a number, number two. Oh, okay, I think right here is what it says that it uses 400. We do one, it uses 100. So let's do two. I just want to see like if we can do this a couple times in a row. Okay. So that takes a little bit of my health away, it looks like. Uh, it looks like it starts counting up to 100. We get a little bit of a buffer. And if I go into that buffer, it uses my health to kind of pay for the spell. So that's pretty cool. So at this rate, with the number two, I can look straight up and cast twice. It'll do a little bit of damage to me, but I will be able to go up into the sky a bit. I'm curious to see if we had a spot where there's a higher ceiling, like how far we actually go up. Oh, you know what? Let's turn off F7. I was in the mines earlier. Placing down torches as mining. All right, so up. That's kind of cool. I like that. I mean, we're not going up super far or whatever, right? But that's still pretty awesome. Okay, so let's take a look and see what the next bit on the tutorial says. See if I can figure this one out. This is going to give us a trick explode. That sounds pretty awesome. Operation entity position. Okay. Operator vector recast. Get a localized recast result. Interesting. And then error suppressor. Okay. Well, let me go ahead, read through this tutorial real quick, figure out what we need to do to complete tutorial level four. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so this is the next trick that we're doing. Trick Explode. This requires a position and a power. So the power is going to be one. We don't want to do one that's super crazy. Uh, the position is going to be the operator of the entity look that returns a vector. A vector is essentially a line that's drawn from your eyes to wherever your cursor is on the screen. So when you look at a block, you can see there's a line that, or I guess a little box around it that shows you which block you are looking at. That's essentially the way the look vector works. But like, for instance, if I'm looking over there at this torch, that's too far away for the little box to be drawn, right? But I'm still looking over there. My cursor is still on it. So that's what that vector is. So operator entity look is the vector that we are looking at. Well, I guess the entity is looking at, but since the entity is the selector caster, me who's casting the spell, it is going to take the vector that I'm looking at, create an explosion of power one is how this is going to work. All right. So I assume this is what we need to do. <laughs> Again, I haven't tried it. Shift, right click, and right click. Uh, error, spell target is outside maximum 32 block radius. Oh, maybe I did something wrong. Error, spell target is outside minimum 32 block radius. You know what? Well, the spell worked, but I think I might have made a mistake here. Uh, I was thinking that this was going to take, 
the vector of me, whatever I was looking at, but maybe there's something else I need to do. Let me go ahead and see if we can get it. So whatever I look at, I right click and it makes an explosion. That's kind of what I wanted to do, but that's not what happened. So let me see if I can correct this real quick. Aha, I figured it out. <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated. But yeah, we're still using the same constant one, explosion power of one uh, for the trick explode. The trick explode is using the vector raycast is what this is. So it needs two inputs. It needs the position to start and where that entity is looking, the vector. So what block I'm looking at essentially. So we have our selector caster, me, who is looking. So it knows where I'm looking and then also knows where I'm at. So it has to know my starting position and what I'm looking at. Then it can draw a line to the block that the cursor is actually on. Yeah, vectors is something that's a little complicated for me. I don't really know too much about it. Uh, but yeah, we can add this to the gun. I just tried this a second ago. But yeah, if we right click, boom. So now we make an explosion of one wherever we right click, which is pretty awesome, right? Uh, I guess it depends. It depends on the material that you are blasting, like how big that blast is going to be. Because if we do it on grass, we do a two by two, right? If we do it on stone, I haven't tried this yet. Maybe it doesn't do anything with the power of one. Doesn't appear to do anything. We might have to bump that up to a power of two, but I would like to see if we can blast stone. I don't think this is going to be a replacement for mining, but we could just go ahead and try this just for fun. Come over here someplace where I guess I don't have to be right up on it. Your cat stats are too weak to cast this spell. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can do a power of one we, and we can destroy all the grass, <laughs> but we're not allowed to destroy stone. Okay. Well, can we do something like a 1.5? Oh, okay. You can see right here, the power of the spell is 105 out of 100. So we're not allowed to do that. So if we do one, two, five, 1 1.3, 1.4, 1.45, 1 there we go. 1.44. Uh, spell vector is non-existence or null. I guess I was just too far away. Yeah, that's still not working. I wonder if there is a material though. Um, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That did a two by two by two in this material. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder if there is a power that w this would work on. Oh, it looks like we destroyed a piece of dirt as well. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, I'll go ahead and replace it. So that's kind of cool. That is how the vector, the target look, and all of this stuff works. Entity look and the entity position. Yeah, both of those have to go into the vector ray cast. Cool. All right, so the next portion of this, oh, it looks like we have five, or we're at level five. We have three different things to do here. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and check this out. I'll go through all the different texts and stuff, and hopefully we'll be back to see something cool that this mod can do. All right, guys. Well, I've been kind of struggling here with the level five. <laughs> As you can see on the mini map, there's a few death points here. Yeah, and I've died a couple of times because I was testing something out that wasn't what we were supposed to be doing. But anyway, I have something that just leveled us up to the next level. This is the Entities 101 thing. And pretty much what I'm doing is similar to what we were just doing a moment ago where we're looking at a block. Yep, we're looking at a block and we click a button and then we get an explosion. Now we look at an entity and then an explosion happens at that entity's position, not at the block. So if I right click on this pig, rip pig, <laughs> this is pretty cool. So it kills pigs in one, like, I think we can be pretty far away from that pig and smack it. Maybe not that far. Maybe not that far. That is pretty awesome though. We can just kind of walk up to a pig and be like, nope, you don't exist anymore. So as one shine the pigs, I wonder if it one shots cows. It seems to. So that, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. If that isn't a good way to go farm for food, I don't know what is. But anyway, guys, let's head back to the base real quick. Um, I'll show you the other thing that I was trying to do here. I wasn't, I, I got kind of confused on what we we're supposed to do for this. So I was doing trick add motion. I thought that's what we had to do to level up. So what trick add motion does with the spell that I have it set to is it whatever entity I'm looking at is what it selects. And then whatever way that entity is facing, it adds some motion to it. So as soon as this squid kind of turns around a little bit and I right click on it, 
it like sends it off at a power of five. But as you can see, my health is down to like one heart. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't realize I was taking that much health away from me and I clicked it a couple of times accidentally. Yeah, I ended up killing myself. But that wasn't what we were supposed to do to level up. What we were doing for exploding the pig, yeah, that seems to level us up. So there was three different things that we could have done. One was entities, one was numbers, and one was vectors. And I chose to do the entity one. So the way this entities 101 spell works is it's getting a list of nearby animals. It's selecting all the animals nearby in a radius of 10. Uh, that radius is centered on my position. So the entity position of the caster of me. So every animal within 10 is coming through on this list. Then we're doing closest to the point. So it's selecting from that list, whichever one is closest to me. So I guess it wasn't whichever one we're looking at. It's just whichever one is closest to me in a 10 block radius, essentially is how that works. So yeah, this it requires the position and the target. The target is this list. The position is on me. Okay, so then we're doing an operator entity position. That is the position of the one that we selected here, the closest animal that is to me. And we're doing a trick explode on it of a power of one. And that's enough to kill a pig and a cow, apparently. So yeah, that's the way this all works. Um, anyway, so we've done a lot here with Psy. <laughs> I'm still learning the mod. I'm still derping around with it. I'm still killing myself with it. Yeah, you wouldn't think that a mod like that would kill you, but certainly can, especially if you crank that power up. Yeah, definitely will take a lot of health away from you if you don't have the correct batteries and I guess the Psy power level meters and all of this stuff. Yeah, like I said, I'm still learning the mod. Don't really know everything that I'm doing, but we're getting through it. We're getting through it. So let me know in the comments down below. Do you guys like the Psy mod? Have you tried it yourself? What are some really cool things that you can do with this mod? Uh, are you interested in seeing me go through more of these tutorials or do you just want to see like me, you know, know everything about it and then, you know, show you something cool that you can do with it? Anyway, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.